Hey there, finance virtuosos. Today we're tackling a question that's got a lot of folks scratching their heads, should you build an emergency fund or focus on paying off debt? Stick around, because we're about to unravel this financial puzzle and get you on the road to financial freedom. This is the Finance Virtuoso channel. If you're new here, hit subscribe and the notification bell for the best money tips and tricks. Alright, let's dive in. If you're managing debt and saving money feels like a distant dream, you're definitely not alone. But here's the kicker, having an emergency fund isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity, even when you're deep in debt. Why? Because life has a way of throwing unexpected curveballs. Imagine this, your car breaks down, your fridge decides it's had enough, or you lose your job. Without an emergency fund, what happens? You're left scrambling, possibly maxing out that credit card and falling deeper into debt. So here's the golden rule, always start with your emergency fund. It's your financial superhero, ready to save the day when life gets messy. Now, let's clarify what we mean by emergency. Job loss. Car breakdowns. Medical emergencies. Home repairs. Unexpected travel. Notice a pattern? These are sudden events that affect your basic needs or ability to earn. Your emergency fund isn't for pizza nights or the latest tech gadget. It's your financial bulletproof vest. Alright, so we're on board with the emergency fund. But how much should you save? If you're still tackling debt, aim for two to three months of living expenses. Once you're debt free, consider bumping that up to six months or more. Now, I get it, that's a lot of money, you might be thinking. Let's break it down into manageable pieces. Let's say your monthly expenses are Rent, $1,000 Utilities, $150 Groceries, $300 Transportation, $200 Phone and internet, $100. Insurance, $100. That totals about $1,850 per month. For a three-month emergency fund, you're looking at $5,550. But here's the trick, instead of fixating on the big number, let's set mini goals. Goal number one, $1,850, one month of expenses. Goal number two, $3,700, two months. Goal number three, $5,550, three months. See? It's much more manageable. As you work toward your emergency fund goal, keep an eye on how your situation changes. When you hit a milestone, celebrate it. Track your progress visually, maybe on a chart or a progress tracker. It can be really motivating to see how even small steps add up over time. Plus, noting how your fund helps you tackle unexpected expenses can remind you why you're doing this. Here's a little secret, money is like a laser beam. Focus it on one spot, and it makes a big impact. Spread it too thin, and you hardly make a dent. So, while you're building your emergency fund, pay the minimums on your debts. Once you hit your emergency fund goal, you can turn your full attention to crushing those debts. But what about my debt? It's giving me anxiety. I totally get it. Seeing those debt numbers can be overwhelming. If it's really stressing you out, try this, put most of your extra cash into your emergency fund, but allocate a small amount to your debt. For example, if you can save $500 a month, Put $450 toward your emergency fund and $50 toward your highest interest debt. It might seem small, but it's progress, and that's what counts. Now, where should you keep this crucial money? Your emergency fund needs to be like a good friend, there when you need it, but not so tempting that you borrow from it for non-emergencies. Enter the High Yield Savings Account. These online accounts offer way better interest rates than traditional banks, often 3% or more. Your money can actually work for you while it sits there. Avoid keeping your emergency fund in. 
your checking account, it's too tempting to spend. Under your mattress, unless you like flat cash and restless nights. Invested in stocks, it's too risky for emergency money. With that friend who has a great business idea. Some great options for high-yield savings accounts include Ally, Capital One 360, and Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Shop around and find one that works for you. Building an emergency fund isn't just about saving money, it's about peace of mind. It's knowing that when life throws you a curveball, you can handle it without derailing your entire financial journey. Think of your emergency fund as a force field around your financial goals. It shields you from those unexpected expenses that could otherwise send you spiraling back into debt. All right, we've covered why you need an emergency fund and how much to save. But how do you make it happen? Here are some tips to supercharge your savings. 1. Automate it. Set up automatic transfers to your emergency fund. What you don't see, you won't miss. 2. Use windfalls wisely, tax refunds, work bonuses, or that $20 you found in your old jeans. Straight to the emergency fund. 3. Side hustle. Pick up a temporary side gig and dedicate that extra cash to your emergency fund. 4. Sell stuff. We all have things we don't need. Turn your clutter into cash for your emergency fund. 5. Cut unnecessary expenses. Do you really need 7 streaming services? 6. Challenge yourself. Try a no-spend week or a cash-only month. It's like a game, but you win real money. I know building an emergency fund while you're in debt can feel like you're spinning your wheels. But trust me, it's one of the smartest financial moves you can make. It's the foundation of your financial house, without it, everything else is at risk of toppling over. Once you have that emergency fund in place, you'll feel a weight lift off your shoulders. You'll be able to focus on tackling your debt without the constant fear of a financial emergency derailing your progress. So there you have it, folks. The secret to building an emergency fund while in debt. 1. Prioritize it. 2. Start small. 3. Stay focused. 4. Keep it accessible but separate. 5. Automate and accelerate. Remember, personal finance is personal. What works for one person might not work for another. The key is to find a balance that lets you sleep at night while still making progress on your financial goals. Building an emergency fund isn't always easy, but neither is being broke. Choose your hard. And that's it for today. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And hey, leave a comment below with your emergency fund goals, let's motivate each other. See you in the next video. And remember, every dollar saved is a step toward financial freedom.